The Madman, His Parables and Poems By Khalil Gibran This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to learn how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. How I Became a Madman You asked me how I became a madman. It happened thus. One day, long before many gods were born, I woke from a very deep sleep and found all my masks were stolen. The seven masks I had fashioned and worn in seven lives. I ran maskless through the crowded streets, shouting, Thieves! Thieves! The cursed thieves! Men and women laughed at me, and some ran to their houses in fear of me. And when I reached the marketplace, a youth standing on a housetop cried, He's a madman. I looked up to behold him. The sun kissed my own naked face for the first time. For the first time, the sun kissed my own naked face, and my soul was inflamed with a love for the sun, and I wanted my masks no more. And as if in a trance, I cried, Blessed are the thieves who stole my masks. Thus I became a madman, and I have found both freedom of loneliness and the safety from being understood. For those who understand us enslave something in us. But let me not be too proud of my safety. Even a thief in a jail is safe from another thief. THE SEVEN SELVES in the stillest hour of the night, as I lay half asleep, my seven selves sat together and thus conversed in whisper. First self. Here, in this madman I have dwelt all these years, with naught to do but renew his pain by day and create his sorrow by night. I can bear my fate no longer, and now I rebel. Second self. Yours is a better lot than mine, brother, for it is given to me to be this madman's joyous self. I laughed his laughter and sing his happy hours, and with thrice-winged feet I dance his brighter thoughts. It is I that would rebel against my weary existence. Third self. And what of me, the love-ridden self? the flaming brand of wild passion and fantastic desires. It is I, the lovesick self, that would rebel against this madman. Fourth self. I, amongst you all, am the most miserable, for naught was given me but odious hatred and destructive loathing. It is I, the tempest-like self, the one born in the black caves of hell, who would protest against serving this madman. Fifth self. Nay, it is I, the thinking self, the fanciful self, the self of hunger and thirst, the one doomed to wander without rest in search of unknown things and things not yet created. It is I, not you, who would rebel. Sixth Self And I, the working self, the pitiful laborer, who, with patient hands and longing eyes, fashion the day into images and give the formless elements new and external forms, it is I, the solitary one, who would rebel against this restless madman. Seventh Self how strange that you all would rebel against this man, because each and every one of you has a preordained fate to fulfill. Ah, could I be but like one of you, a self with a determined lot? But I have none. I am the do-nothing self, the one who sits in the dumb, empty nowheres and no-when, while you are busy recreating life. Is it you or I, neighbors, who should rebel? When the seventh self thus spake, the other six selves looked with pity upon him, 
but said nothing more. And as the night grew deeper, one after the other went to sleep, enfolded with a new and happy submission. But the seventh self remained watching and gazing at nothingness, which is behind all things. THE WISE KING Once there ruled in the distant city of Werani a king who was both mighty and wise, and he was feared for his might and loved for his wisdom. Now, in the heart of that city was a well whose water was cool and crystalline, from which all the inhabitants drank, even the king and his courtiers, for there was no other well. One night, when all were asleep, a witch entered the city, and poured seven drops of strange liquid into the well, and said, From this hour he who drinks this well shall become mad. Next morning all the inhabitants, save the king and his lord chamberlain, drank from the well, and became mad, even as the witch had foretold. And during that day the people in the narrow streets and in the market-places did naught but whisper to one another, The king is mad. Our king and his lord chamberlains have lost their reason. Surely we cannot be ruled by a mad king. We must dethrone him. That evening the king ordered a golden goblet to be filled from the well, and when it was brought to him he drank deeply and gave it to his lord chamberlain to drink. And there was great rejoicing in the distant city of Wirani, because its king and its lord chamberlain had regained their reason. AMBITION Three men met at a tavern table. One was a weaver, another a carpenter, and the third a plowman. Said the weaver, I sold a fine linen shroud to-day for two pieces of gold. Let us all have the wine we want. And I, said the carpenter, I sold my best coffin. We will have a great roast with the wine. I only dug a grave, said the plowman, but my patron paid me double. Let us have honey cakes, too. And all that evening the tavern was busy for they called often for wine and meat and cakes, and they were merry. And the host rubbed his hands and smiled at his wife, for his guests were spending freely. When they left, the moon was high, and they walked along the road, singing and shouting together. The host and his wife stood in the tavern door and looked after them. Ah, said the wife, these gentlemen, so free-handed and so gay, if only they could bring us such luck every day. Then our son need not be a tavern-keeper and work so hard. We could educate him, and he could become a priest. THE THREE ANTS Three ants met at the nose of a man who was sleeping in the sun, and after they had saluted one another, each according to the custom of his tribe. They stood there conversing. The first ant said, These hills and plains are the most barren I have known. I have searched all day for a grain of some sort, and there is none to be found. Said the second ant, I too have found nothing, though I have visited every nook and glade. This is, I believe, what my people call the soft-moving land where nothing grows. Then the third ant raised his head and said, My friends, we are standing now on the nose of the supreme ant, the mighty and infinite ant, whose body is so great that we cannot see it, whose shadow is so vast that we cannot trace it, whose voice is so loud that we cannot hear it and he is omnipresent. When the third ant spoke thus, the other ants looked at each other and laughed. At that moment the man moved, and in his sleep raised his hand and scratched his nose, and the three ants were crushed. Night and the Madman 
I am like thee, O night, dark and naked. I walk on the flaming path which is above my daydreams, and whenever my foot touches earth, a giant oak tree comes forth. Nay, thou art not like me, O madman, for thou still lookest backward to see how large a footprint thou leavest in the sand. I am like thee, O night, silent and deep, and in the heart of my loneliness lies a goddess in childbed, and in him who is being born, heaven touches hell. Nay, thou art not like me, O madman, for thou shudderest yet before pain, and the song of the abyss terrifies thee. I am like thee, O night, wild and terrible, for my ears are crowded with cries of conquered nations and sighs for forgotten lands. Nay, thou art not like me, O madman, for thou still takest thy little self for a comrade, and with thy monster self thou canst not befriend. I am like thee, O night, cruel and awful, for my bosom is lit by burning ships at sea, and my lips are wet with blood of slain warriors. Nay, thou art not like me, O madman, for the desire for a sister spirit is yet upon thee, and thou hast not become a low unto thyself. I am like thee, O night, joyous and glad, for he who dwells in my shadow is now drunk with virgin wine, and she who follows me is sinning mirthfully. Nay, thou art not like me, O madman, for thy soul is wrapped in the veil of seven folds, and thou holdest not thy heart in thy hand. I am like thee, O night, patient and passionate, for in my breast a thousand dead lovers are buried in shrouds of withered kisses. Yea, madman, art thou like me? Art thou like me? And canst thou ride the tempest as a steed, and grasp the lightning as a sword? Like thee, O knight, like thee, mighty and high, and my throne is built upon heaps of fallen gods, and before me too pass the days to kiss the hem of my garment, but never to gaze at my face. Art thou like me, child of my darkest heart? And dost thou think my untamed thoughts, and speak my vast language? Yea, we are twin brothers, O night, for thou revealest space, and I reveal my soul. THE GREAT LONGING Here I sit, between my brother the mountain and my sister the sea. We three are one in loneliness, and the love that binds us together is deep and strong and strange. Nay, it is deeper than my sister's depth and stronger than my brother's strength and stranger than the strangeness of my madness. Eons and eons have passed since the first gray dawn made us visible to one another, and though we have seen the birth and the fullness and the death of many worlds, we are still eager and young. We are young and eager, and yet we are mateless and unvisited. And though we lie in unbroken half-embrace, we are uncomforted. And what comfort is there for controlled desire? an unspent passion. Whence shall come the flaming God to warm my sister's bed? And what she-torrents shall quench my brother's fire? And who is the woman that shall command my heart? In the stillness of the night my sister murmurs in her sleep the fire God's unknown name. And my brother calls afar upon the cool and distant goddess, but upon whom I call in my sleep I know not. Here I sit between my brother, the mountain, and my sister, the sea. We three are one in loneliness, and the love that binds us together is deep and strong and strange. 
When My Sorrow Was Born When my sorrow was born, I nursed it with care, and watched over it with loving tenderness. And my sorrow grew like all living things, strong and beautiful and full of wondrous delights. And we loved one another, my sorrow and I, and we loved the world about us. For sorrow had a kindly heart, and mind was kindly with sorrow. And when we conversed, my sorrow and I, our days were winged, and our nights were girded with dreams. For sorrow had an eloquent tongue, and mine was eloquent with sorrow. And when we sang together, my sorrow and I, our neighbors sat at their windows and listened. For our songs were deep as the sea, and our melodies were full of strange memories. And when we walked together, my sorrow and I, People gazed at us with gentle eyes, and whispered in words of exceeding sweetness. And there were those who looked with envy upon us, for sorrow was a noble thing, and I was proud with sorrow. But my sorrow died, like all living things, and alone I am left to muse and ponder. And now, when I speak, my words fall heavy upon my ears, and when I sing my songs, my neighbors come not to listen. And when I walk the streets, no one looks at me. Only in my sleep I hear voices saying in pity, See, there lies the man whose sorrow is dead. And when my joy was born, And when my joy was born, I held it in my arms and stood on the housetop shouting, Come ye, my neighbors, come and see, for joy this day is born unto me. Come and behold this gladsome thing that laughed at the sun. But none of my neighbors came to look upon my joy, and great was my astonishment. And every day for seven moons I proclaimed my joy from the housetop, and yet no one heeded me, and my joy and I were alone, unsought and unvisited. Then my joy grew pale and weary, because no other heart but mine held its loveliness, and no other lips kissed its lips. Then my joy died of isolation, and now I only remember my dead joy and remembering my dead sorrow. But memory is an autumn leaf that murmurs a while in the wind, and then is heard no more. End of The Madman by Khalil Gibran This recording is in the public domain.